Ah, dibujona. Ok, dibujona. Ah. <coughs> I'm trying to look at my face. Alright, let's get straight to it. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Rue5A5, back with another video. Um, I don't think I've made a video about my Sixers and the Jimmy Butler situation in a while. Um, yes, that's that's my wife's purple tile. I need purple cover in the background on my green screen, so what? But anyway, um, yeah, Jimmy Butler and the 76ers. I'm bringing this up because, um, you know, I had just seen uh, on Twitter, you know, a little article um, about Jimmy Butler basically, you know, giving his thoughts, you know, obviously now that he's with the Heat, you know, on what what was going on in the Philadelphia 76ers organization during the time he was there. And he went on J.J. Reddick, another former Sixers podcast, to discuss the whole situation. Um, and I'm going to be honest, yes, I, I had my mixed feelings about Jimmy Butler, you know, of how he was doing certain things when he was in Philly. I'm going to be honest now. You know, from what I had heard, you know, from when he was in M Minnesota, you know, basically what I, how, how I feel about Jimmy Butler now is... You know, he just wants his teammates to fulfill their potential of the fact that they're in the NBA. You know, as far as if Jimmy Butler having them doing 4 a.m., you know, wake-up calls to go practice in the gym, you know, and such things like that. You know, going back to even what Jimmy Butler said, you know, no NBA player or no, you know, professional athlete of any sport should be really, you know, I don't want to say scared, but like intimidated or whatever the case, to go to their front office to just tell them, you know, how they feel about a certain situation, whether good or bad. Um, so, all in all, I'm, I'm getting off topic with it. So, basically, you know, the whole ordeal with Jimmy Butler of how he's looked at, of people saying, you know, he's a bad guy, or whatever the case. Um, again, you know, I had my feelings of uh, and thoughts of how I thought he was. You know, I ain't gonna lie, I thought Jimmy Butler was kind of a, you know, um, but nah, he seemed like a cool dude, like I said, of him coming to Philly, you know, because when, when I first heard that it was stuff going on in Philly or whatnot, I'm like, oh, here go Jimmy Butler again, you know, doing whatever he do, but at the end of the day, it's like, like I said, of him, you know, seeing potential and, you know, players like Embiid and Simmons, and on the podcast that I had watched, he said he didn't have any problems with any of the players, per se. It was, he said, he didn't know really who was in charge whenever something came about. You know, as far as a winning roster or plays and such things like that. You know, just like how they said he had challenged Brett Brown, you know, to, you know, fulfill his, his actual duties. Of being a coach, like you know, drawing up particular plays and such things like that. And excuse my loud PlayStation in the background. That thing is a lawnmower or what have you. Um, but yeah, like just so I'm just saying. So all in all, I agree. You know, with the fact that Jimmy Butler, like he said, he said he didn't have any particular issues with anybody per se. He just felt like he didn't know. To go to who to go to as far as of like you know whatever the case because i guess no one was taking you know credit or i don't want to say credit but you know showing that they had authority you know as far as whatever um and and on the podcast he said to jj reddick you know like i said you know he didn't know what was going on you know jj reddick even said at times he felt like that you know um and then i also heard you know jimmy butler say that you know, the coach had at one point tried to just give him the ball when when Jimmy Butler, he he didn't have an issue with it. But he was like, I guess, saying that he felt like it should have been Joel or Ben because they were the, they were the, you know, the rising stars of the team or whatnot. And that Jimmy was Jimmy Butler was there to do his job. 
you know, which he had been doing, you know, had been making clutch, you know, buckets and games and stuff like that. And so it was just like Jimmy Butler was just like, yo, like what's going on with the, you know, with the coach of how he's having everybody else do things. And so, you know, I ain't gonna lie, you know, like I said, a lot of people said that Jimmy Butler's, you know, being a a bitter a bitter baby mama. And and again, I'm not gonna sit here and say I agree with that. No. Like I said, do you know, at before I, I, you know, was listening to certain things that Jimmy Butler was saying that I think he was, you know, going going over going over overboard a little bit. At times I did think that. You know, like I said, but when like I was like Stephen A. Smith when when uh when we got Jimmy Butler, I'm like, yeah, we got a dog. And I feel like Jimmy Butler did all he could, you know, in his, his short time in Philly. Like I said, he fulfilled his, his duties of being a clutch player and all that stuff. And like I said, he said he didn't have any issues with any of the, of, of the players or whatnot. He just felt like the time that he was there, he did what he was trying to do. And, you know, he had the option, option to, you know, sign back with them or sign, you know, wherever else he wanted to. Obviously, he's been he's been very successful in Miami, with him and Bam Adebayo and the rest of that squad. As you can see, he got a better record than the Sixers. So that right there should tell you something. I mean, Philly. I'm not even gonna say Philly. I'm not gonna call out any of the players. Brett Brown. Not Brett Brown. I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt as far as of yes. When you first came into Philly, you had the team you know that went what ten and seventy two. So you went through the, you know, that process crap. And then, like I said, up to last year, we had, you know, I, I feel like we was lucky we got J.J. Reddick back. You know, my man J.J. took a, a, a you know, a, a discounted deal on that second year deal. And that was for a particular reason, because he was trying to give you, Brett Brown, the benefit of the doubt. Of, okay, you know, got a little rapport here with the Sixers. We'll come back, you know, cheaper deal. And all that good stuff. I'm just saying, Brett, you come, you came from Greg Popovich, the Spurs, and we get it. You tried to implement that into the system of the Sixers, you know, with how you've done the whole thing with Al Horford and Joel Embiid, etc., etc. Just like, you know, with uh, M Embiid and uh, Simmons out, you know, like I said, Tobias has been averaging like 26, you know, Richardson has been out, um, Al Horford, his points have gone up a little bit. I don't know. I'm just saying, Brett. Like, you know, going back to the... I'm, I'm kind of everywhere with this this video. But I just feel like, Brett, you... You you know, I feel like your time has, has kind of run its course. Like I said, nothing against you. You're an NBA coach for a reason, but... You... you Yeah, Brett. I, I, I don't know, Brett. You just... I don't know. You know, y'all let me know down below in the comments. Do you guys think Brett Brown should stay? Do you think, you know, Philly needs to let him go? Me personally, I feel like it's you know the, the 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 situation has run its course, you know maybe get a fresh head coach in there, and and we'll see what happens from there. You know we we already got like I said Al Horford and Tobias Harris who, like I said have have stepped up occasionally, for the most part. Like I said you know Tobias since Ben and, and all them boys been out, Tobias is averaging twenty six and like eight, so. Like I said, I don't know. I just feel like Brett just need to do something else. Like I said, if not Brett Brown personally, I don't think he'll be back in Philly. That's my personal opinion. Um, so again, yeah. But like I said, you guys let me know down below in the comments what you think of the whole scenario. And yeah. It's your boy Rule 585 and I'm holler at y'all later. And I'm out, y'all. Peace.